prototype of the model of the Liebherr LTM 1750 mobile crane first appeared at the Baumer exhibition in April 2019. Here is the finished model and it comes in a large box with very nice pictures of the real machine. And there's an instruction manual that we'll see more of shortly. The trays are held together by plastic clips and that's so much better than having to cut tape. Lifting the lid we see the many parts and they're all nicely protected. Included with the model is this instruction manual and it's one of the best. It starts with a comprehensive parts list and then there are a whole series of photographs with written text to explain the features of the model and that includes a QR code link to a video as well. Overall there are 18 pages and that also includes a reaving diagram for the biggest of the hooks and these instructions certainly will help anyone with the model. Here is the model out of the box and to put the crane in road going formation we need to add some supports for the cab and we'll also reflect the configuration shown on the box by adding the front outrigger beams. We will take the tape off the drum and also parts of the TY guying system. We start by inserting supports for the crane cab at the back, although I'm not entirely sure why these are separate parts and not permanently fixed. Once they're in we can rotate the cab around to the transport position and then by applying some downward pressure to the cab we can rest it on top of the supports. So that's a good system and it's better than the cab just flapping around. If the crane carries its front outriggers it's still within a 12 tonne axle load so let's fit those. And it's a smooth easy fit you offer up the outrigger and push in a long steel pin. Then we have one other connection to make which is the hydraulic ram that pushes the outrigger out. And the first thing to do is to extend the piston a little. We can then rotate the ram round to the connection point and it's easily secured with a screw. With that done we are good to go and the outrigger can be folded into the side of the crane. Next for that realistic look we'll take off the tape that's on the drum because let's face it you never see the guys on the real crane having to do this. At the front the model comes with part of the TY guying system fitted and that's slightly odd if you don't fit the rest of the system. But fortunately it's easy to remove by undoing a screw. Lastly we won't put a hook on but the hoist cut off chain hangs down. It should really be disconnected but we'll just wind it around the hitch at the front. With the crane being particularly laid back let's have a look at the chassis and the detailing is of a high standard. The drive shafts and suspension components are modelled and various other tanks and parts add detail. There's also a central rear stabiliser which we'll see later. The carrier cab has got beacon lights and stub aerials and there's a trio of windscreen wipers. The lights at the front are typically Liebherr and the step plate is textured. One thing you can just about see in the cab is that there is Liebherr on the seat backs. While we're at the front the boom head has got separate metal pulleys and there are decent chevron graphics. Behind the cab there are some graphics including very small warning signs and the tyres have got Michelin branding on the sidewalls. The outrigger pistons can't be fully retracted but the detailing with small graphics is excellent. That high detail continues at the back with nice lights and there are more tiny graphics including a number plate. There are also tiny lights on stalks. Detail on the carrier deck is impressive with textured surfaces and in the engine area there are tanks with caps and there are some tiny grab rails. Even the inside of the side fairing has a texture and there are some very nice mesh grills. The outriggers come with metal spreader plates and again tiny graphics add to the authentic look. The crane has got some impressive metal working platforms when it's in service and some are detailed with tiny grab handles also. The big power pack has got plenty of metal handrails and the rope used on the winch drums is of good quality. The luffing gear is reeved out of the box and it's a tiny auxiliary winch at the front. The counterweight blocks are nicely decorated with the weights marked on and there's a locking plate on top. 
More small graphics on the power pack add to the detail. The profile of the boom is excellent with thin walls. And the smaller free sheave hook is also very high quality. It's all metal and it includes safety latches on the hook. There's also a much bigger heavy lift hook with nine sheaves. And it's the same high quality and has working safety latches. The TY guiding system is also very well made with more tiny graphics. And that includes chevrons at the end and also the weight marked in the middle. A first on this model is that there are also graphics on the metal guy bars. At the boom top most of the TY system is metal. And that includes the very large pulley. Although the hydraulic ram jackets are plastic, the colour match is excellent. This is a big 9 axle crane but it does have suspension that works on all of the axles. It is a grouped suspension so sets of axles move together. But the engineering is very good and it's all very smooth. Each axle can also be steered independently. And for the most part you can achieve some very good angles. But to check it out let's get the crane onto the test track. And in a straight line the model rolls reasonably well. But you'd have to apply some downward pressure to get all of the wheels to be grounded. Let's set one of the steering modes that's possible. And that allows the model to pose well. And if we drive the model it does trace out a smooth curve. This crane does feature a central rear outrigger. And it has that because it often travels without its rear outriggers attached. So it gets used when first setting the crane up. And on the model we can fit a pad which gets pinned into place. You can lower it a bit by unscrewing it. And here you can see this central outrigger in operation. So we are on site and we're now setting up the crane. And we can move the crane cab out into its working position. And we can also raise the handrails which are hinged. And this is much nicer than swapping them for a different set. As soon as it's safe to walk on the crane we can take some rope off of the winch drum. And take that forward to add a hook. Here you can see we've added the smaller hook block. And although we've probably not rigged it correctly we are using the tying off point at the boom head. To raise the boom on the model is super smooth. The two boom ramps have metal jackets with grub screws in them. And when you've reached the angle you want, you can tighten up on the grub screws. This is now a common system and it works very well. Before raising the boom we probably should have spread out the front outriggers. But the Cranes Etc team always like to pretend they know what they're doing. Anyway we'll carry on and attach the rear outriggers. And to make it easy we'll pin the pads on first. The connection of the beams is exactly the same as it was for the front outriggers. And when they're on you can telescope out the beam and lower the pads by unscrewing. There's a moderate amount of extension in the pistons and you can rest the pads on the spreader plates. To get access up onto the crane deck there are a pair of nice folding ladders. And we can also drop in some large mesh work platforms. These are very nice metal mesh parts and they just rest in place. There's also another work platform for each side and onto that we can clip two access ladders. And then fix the assembly in place. Now we can see how the operator accesses the cab. And there are no loose ladders to climb up. Another part to attach is this light assembly. But it doesn't actually clip in. So here we're using some sticky stuff to stick it. The counterweight for the crane is complex. And here we're resting the base plate onto the carrier deck. And that represents the first stage of the crane self ballasting. We can then pose the crane with the very large power pack assembly. And with careful control of the winch we can lower it down onto the base plate. Yes only on cranes etc can you see crane driving of this quality. In reality though you need to make a connection between the base plate and the power pack. And we do that by extending the rams which exist in the power pack. And that gives us space to make the connection. And we do that using very long brass bolts with a nut on the end. As usual tools are provided with the model to fix the nuts and bolts. And that's a relief because some of the spaces are very tight. After that we can then lower the power pack down. And you do that if you want to go straight to the operating mode and just fix the counterweight on the back of the crane. 
To fit the blocks on, you need to insert some special spacers. And here we're just setting it up for a single stack of counterweights. We'll see later that it can be double stacked. If you want to replicate the way the real crane works, you can. And you start that by raising the power pack using the jacks inside it. You can then rotate the crane and hook the power pack over, and then use the jacks to raise the counterweight. Finally, steel pins fix the connection, and then we can add the securing plates on top, although they are only cosmetic. Two cover plates get added to the power pack jacks. Moving on to the boom, and each section has locking points at approximately 50, 90, and 100%. And to extend the boom sections, you pull them out in the usual way. And the model engineering is excellent because it's all super smooth. Another very nice touch on the model is that a lifting beam is included, and that helps keep some weight on the hook block. Another feature is that the crane cab tilts. For heavy lifting we need to attach the TY guying system, and to make this easier to see we'll do it up in the air, and we'll start by replacing the parts that we took off at the start of the video. These are holders for the large wheels in transport mode. So here is the guying system as it comes out of the box, and during transport the two sides are connected with a tie bar. To fit the guy system we'll use the giant assist cranes, and we need to tuck it in underneath the winch rope. Once it's under, we engage the connection points at the top end, and then it's secured on each side by means of a screw. The arms are raised and lowered by a hydraulic ram on each side, and they also have a simple screwed connection. At this point, we can disconnect the transport bar, and because we like to be lazy, we'll just undo one end and then fold it over. At least that will stop it getting lost. To make things easier, we'll raise up the super lift arms, and they are on stiff hydraulic rams. And we can begin the boom head connection, and the first thing we need to do is to fit a connecting bar on each side. Again, these are simple connections with nuts and bolts. To make the rope connection to the boom head, we need to put the key in the winch at the end of the arm. It's got a nice positive brake action, and we let off some rope and take the pulley to the boom head. The connection at the boom head is a little bit different as it's a push fit plastic connection. It works well enough, but it might not be able to accommodate a ton of tension. The final part of the assembly is to attach the guy rods and these run from the end of the arms down to the base of the boom. The top connection is a little unusual and you have to slide the parts together. And at the bottom there's a conventional connection with brass nuts and bolts. Now that we have the system all reasonably tensioned up, we can go for the maximum lifting capacity by spreading out the guying arms. And at this point you start to get something that looks very impressive. To go for the big lifts we will adjust the counterweight and add some more on. And in this respect the counterweight system is very clever. The counterweight tray has got some moving brackets which you can fold out. And then we need to rearrange the position of the special spacers and then you can restack the counterweight blocks. And as you can see here, you can now form two stacks on each side of the counterweight tray. So here we are loading up the 10 ton blocks and there are 16 of them. And there are two five ton blocks left over. And the way we're putting those on is the way that it's shown in Liebherr documentation. As we've got the boom fully extended, let's do a dim check and see how high it is. And it's about 118 centimeters or 46 inches. Of course, we can expect to see this model made in other colors. And first up is Mammut, and we'll take a look at that model in a separate review. The Liebherr LTM 1750 is an impressive crane in real life, and this model by WSI certainly does it justice. It has some excellent detailing with top-notch model engineering, 
And overall it comes together as one of the best large mobile crane models that you can buy. No doubt, it is excellent. Thank you.